There are numerous points in the process where oxygen comes into play. The first is with grapes. Uh, from the moment you crush or press grapes, there is oxygen involved. As soon as that berry separates from the rachis, from the stem of the bunch, you're getting oxygen inside the grape. That could be good, that can be bad. If you are a machine picking grapes, then you're gonna get a lot of oxygen because you're gonna have a slush pile by the time you get to the winery. If you are crushing or pressing in the winery, you're still gonna have oxygen come in. Again, as soon as you start processing, what some people do is they try to make a very reductive process and protect from any oxygen. They'll blanket the hopper with uh, inert gas. They put um, sulfur dioxide, antioxidant into the grapes in the field even to prevent oxidation. And that's fine. Um, and then other people go the opposite way. This is a common practice with Chardonnay, including here in the North Coast, hyperoxidation of juice, where you get all that oxygen out so the juice turns brown and it looks really nasty. And then those browning compounds kind of, kind of just fall away during the winemaking process. They actually bind with other things that like particulate matter and they, they um, become part of the lees of the wine. And then the finished wine is a little more stable and uh, resistant to oxidation because you've removed some of that browning potential. Some people uh, like to macerate their grapes on skins uh, before they ferment. If it's red grapes, we call, usually call that a cold soak. Um, and if they're white grapes, that's uh, generally a precursor to making an orange wine. Though there are a lot of uh, white wines, conventional white wines like Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, that have a lot of uh, aromatic compounds, com compounds in the skins. And so there might be a little bit of maceration to get those compounds out. But if you macerate wine, uh, white grapes on the skins, that means crush them and you let them sit in a tank uh, before you press the juice off for 12 hours, 18 hours, 36 hours, you're gonna get some tannin, you're gonna get some color, and you're gonna get some oxygen. And that's the birth of so-called orange wines or amber wines. Um, there is a wide range of practices here, uh, and it is a niche category. But um, this is an oxidative style that is not fortified. It's generally not sweet, uh, generally made from white grapes, sometimes a rosé style. And you get oxidative character from oxygen um, exposure to the juice. But at the same time, the tannins that are coming in from the, from the skins are giving a little bit of protection. So you have oxygen coming in and tannin saying, mm, no thanks. And that tension, if it's done right, will give you one structure and some savory oxidative character, but not oxidized, 